and the girls. I can hear the lorry. Here they come. Stop this now and be helpful. Hey, Louis. Welcome to vlog number one. I wanted to call it episode one, but I'm hoping actually it won't be that dramatic. Um, so, <laughs> vlog number one. Um, I thought I'd start vlogging about our move to Cornwall, uh, primarily for friends and family, but if anyone else happens to find us, then that's awesome as well. So, I'm Helen, and this is RD. Excuse the poo behind, I'm actually poo picking at the moment. Um, this is RD, and he moved down uh, two days ago, I think, didn't you? And so far, he seems to be really enjoying living in this beautiful location. Uh, I've got to get used to which way I'm going with this, haven't I? That's not going to work. I've got several others um, who are standing over there. I've got to get used to which way to point this thing, haven't I? Because <laughs> I'm way out of practice. Thanks, Ardy. That's not helping either. Um, you may have, if you're friends with me, um, remember that I did have a go at this a few years back with limited success. Um, I actually got into a bit of trouble at work, so I'm hoping this time, since I'm not doing the same job, that I am allowed to actually video um, what I get up to. Um, as I say, it's not going to be overly exciting. It'll mostly feature ponies, probably quite large amounts of poo. Um, <laughs> but also, we're going to be going down to the beach and just hopefully having a really good time. So I just wanted to share that with my friends and family and anybody else. So I will keep adding to this as the week goes on. Um, I may even add a bit more later because I'm expecting my chickens to arrive um, a little bit later on. I didn't move all the horses all in one go, um, partly because the lovely transporter that I found um, only had a three and a half ton and yes, and so obviously it only takes two. But are you going to eat me? But in hindsight, I thought that actually it would be better to only move to it once because it's just me on my own at the minute. And much as I, um, you know, I'm used to horses, I've had this lot for a very long time. Well, apart from my day. I know. Um, I just thought it might be easier to settle them in a couple at a time as well. And they travelled really well. They settled really well. And this is, yeah, their first two days, I think, that they've all been together. And so far, I don't know if they were just in shock or what, but they're really chilled, more chilled than they were back in Worcestershire, where we moved from. Oh, are you tired? Oh, I did. Oh, I'm angry. <laughs> so we'll say bye for now because my wheelbarrow is awaiting and I really need to pick up some of this poo because I haven't done it for the last four days. And you can imagine five horses. Um, I've confined them into a smallish space. Um, probably I don't know, a couple of acres um, just while they've been settling and I've been feeding them quite a lot um, to help them get over the journey <laughs> and they're so tired <laughs> oh, that's so funny um, so yeah so I've got, we've got an awful lot of poo in one place because I've not picked it up until today so I better crack on before it starts raining it's already been a bit mizzly um, which is if you don't know mist and drizzle mixed together it does it a lot in Cornwall yes it does <laughs> Oh, you're so tired. You are so funny. Oh, Adi. So, I will check back in with you a little bit later. Happy New Year. It's the 1st of January, 2022. Um, I didn't get back to you yesterday because um, I was poop picking and then my chickens arrived. Um, Paul arrived with the chickens. Um, they're not usually kept in um, little accommodation like this, but their um, usual accommodation is still up in Worcestershire. So this is a temporary measure until uh, we get everything sorted out down here properly. But you can see, they seem happy enough actually. They uh, had to be split into two groups to fit in there. Um, I have finally, you'll be pleased to know, who picked the field. Uh, we will, once we get the tractor down here, harrow um, and not pick it up so much. And also the stuff that I have picked up, we'll let it rot and then we'll spread it back on. Because we had soil analysis done 
um, earlier in the year and it's not bad but one of the things that it picked up that it was lacking is the um, what do they call it like the organic matter so because it's never been um, chemically fertilized which is good it also though because it's always been poo picked it hasn't had organic um, fertilizer on it either and it does need something you can't just keep taking it away and not putting anything back so uh, yeah that's the plan but you can see everybody's still uh, which way around that way everyone's still grazing quite happily and uh, I think what I'm going to do now is go for a little walk I think we'll take our D and the dogs um, I'm not going to try taking one of mine out um, just today I don't really fancy it a little bit windy and I'm a bit of a wimp so um, I think we'll just take Adi for one of our llama walks as we call it and um, I might take you along depending whether I can manage my phone and the dogs on the leads at the same time but it'd be nice um, if we can get a little bit of um, a little bit of footage of what it's like because it will be our hacking hopefully if I uh, get my brave pants on which I'm sure I will uh, but yeah I just thought I'd just check in say happy new year and add a little bit more because uh, I'm going to run this over the whole weekend and then I'll probably put it up, I don't know, Tuesday or Wednesday, something like that. And then, because I'd be at work and I doubt I'll do anything the rest of the week. And then next weekend I'll start filming again. So it'll kind of be a week, basically it'll be a weekend sort of vlog, but over several days. And then if I do anything else during the week, um, I'll add it in to make a sort of a weekly vlog. So anyway, I'm not sure, what, it's over here somewhere, isn't it? I'm not sure where to look. I'll get the hang of it. Anyway, see you later. Bye. So we're out on our llama walk, as I like to call it, and we've got our great big RD Spanish llama up in front. <laughs> Shouldn't really call him a llama. He's more like a Labrador, to be honest. And talking of dogs, I've got them on the lead down here. So we're having a little walk around our local byway. Come on, with neighbouring ponies. He walks quicker than us. <laughs> I have to walk quite quick to catch up to get me fit at least after all that poo picking I did earlier I um, certainly don't need to go to the gym so that's good not really a gym goer but yeah I just thought I'd uh, show you so if I turn you around that way come on you can see got quite nice off-road hacking and um, there is a B road at the end of it but you can actually um, avoid that and loop round <laughs> and loop round and uh on country lanes and on the byway um, for quite a few miles actually we can do quite a few different loops so I just need to get my brave pants on and get on the get on my girls and uh, yeah otherwise I'm gonna be doing an awful lot of walking I might start long raining to start with actually it's quite a while since uh, I did any of that with them and it's a good thing to do and um, especially new place and although my girls were all um, in their late teens and certainly not spring chickens, they're all pretty low mileage. So you know, they're, not, they're not experienced at going to new places particularly. They've only ever really hacked around their local area. Um, so yeah, I think it'll do, us, it'll do me good building my confidence, but also do their confidence the world of good being out in the long reins. Because I can always then go to their head to support them a little bit if I need to. So you can see we do quite a lot of just leading them out like big dogs. So uh, yeah, I'll uh, perhaps when we get round, we might be able to see the sea in the distance. You know, not close. Um, I might uh, show you that in a little bit as well. So bye for now. See you later. Ooh, around the corner. I'll stop this. So we've walked a little bit further along the byway now. You can see there's an awful lot of water. It's been a very wet winter thus far. Um, but because it's also really windy, as you can tell, actually, if you look, I love the way it's almost like, um, you know, on the weather advert, not adverts, the weather forecasts, they show the wind direction with the arrows. But around here, look, you can just tell from which way by, look at everything, you can tell which way the prevailing winds come from. Um, what I also love at this time of year, when everything's all looking a bit sort of brown and not looking its best, you come across in pretty much all the hedgerows gorse which is just so pretty lovely bright yellow really lovely um, especially at this time of year when everything else is looking a bit grim but yeah so with the wind it dries the ground out really quickly so although our field has obviously taken a huge amount of water 
Um, it's a lot of it is drained. It's not like the clay that we were on at Worcestershire, which used to get really, really deep mud. Um, it has drained nicely, but also the wind just dries it out really well as well. So that is a bonus. But Paul and our deer waiting at the end. When we get there, there is a little bit of a sea view from the end, but it is sort of two miles in the distance. So it's not the clearest of days today. We might not be able to see it. But you can certainly hear it when it's stormy, when the tide's in and the wind's blowing in the right direction. You can actually hear the sea, which is quite lovely. And I think if our field was just a little bit higher, we would actually probably be able to see it from our field. Oh, in fact, no, it's a bit further on than I thought. I'll stop it for now and come back later. <laughs> well, good morning from not so sunny Cornwall. Um, I've popped on today, which is Monday, Bank Holiday Monday, to show you the wonderful hairstyle worthy of Vida Sassoon or somewhere. Tony and Guy, I don't know. I don't have my hair done, can you tell? Um, yeah, look at this. He's found the thistles. Oh, cherry. Cherry, cherry pie. Yeah, Livy's got a few. Not quite, that's not quite so impressive. Got a few up there, like a hair grip. But I like this, you've gone for the centre parting. It's very Nana Muscuri. Again, showing my age there. Nice thing to parting. A bit like curtains. Nice. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is going to take a vast amount of detangler and a mane and tail brush, I feel. She's even, oh blimey cherry, she's even got them in her beard. That's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Stop pulling faces. Oh, it's because of you. Oh, you are grumpy. Grumpy, jealous ponies. Oh, Livy Lou. Oh my goodness. Ugh. Oh, and if you're wondering about the rugs, because I'm sure some of my friends will be telling me off in the comments about my ponies having rugs, especially the Dales ponies, who don't really need them technically. My thinking was um, when they came off the lorry, uh, both the Dales are in their late teens. And I was a bit concerned partly about the weather because it is, thank you, Livy. Um, it is, although it's really mild, it's very windy pretty much all the time and it gets wet so they get wind chilled quite easily. But my main concern really was after the journey that they might have stiff muscles from obviously being four, nearly five hours in a lorry, especially when they're not particularly fit. Um, you know, they're not competition horses or anything that are used to that kind of exercise. And it is very, it is like riding them for a long period of time because they're having to constantly adjust, you know, for the balance of the journey and everything. And I was just a little bit concerned that they might get really tight through their backs and that would then manifest in hind limb lameness or lameness somewhere else. So my main thinking really on putting the rugs on is just to keep their backs warm and to help keep them supple. And it seems to be working because uh, touch wood, I mean, they came off particularly um, Livy and Spirit came off quite stiff in their hind end. But moving around out here, it's kept nice and warm. Um, they seem to be absolutely fine now. Um, and no signs of lameness at all. So fingers crossed, that's working. And now I've left, I've put them on, I don't really feel I can take them off again. <laughs> Not at the moment, because it's due to go cold. And again, as I say, the, the wind chill is quite considerable. Um. Oh, honestly, mares for you. Um, so yeah, so I just thought I'd show you anyway, the uh, state of them. We're going to go to a beach, hopefully later today. We were going to go yesterday, but just got caught up doing shopping pony food and that kind of thing and just didn't get around to it and I didn't vlog a visit to Mole Valley. I might do some time. Um, it's nice to have a sort of country store again. We're a bit short of them um, in Worcestershire. They slowly close down and you have to get most stuff online which is a pain. So it was nice to have something that was like the old countrywide that we used to have that used to be Midlandshire farmers before that. Um, yeah, I remember getting excited when um, Countrywide closed down because they did say that Mole Valley was going to buy them out, but it never happened. So now we've got Mole Valley. Yay! Anyway, I'll check in with you later. Say bye, Libby. Oh, what a face. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>